Hello, welcome to the Hawthorne Cottage Craft Podcast. Today is Sunday the 5th of February and this is episode 50. My name is Kate, you can find me on Instagram as Kate underscore Hawthorne Cottage Craft, on Ravelry as a runner bean and there's a Ravelry group for the podcast, Hawthorne Cottage Craft Podcast. All of that will be listed somewhere here on the screen and down below in the description box, the links will be there. If you're here for the first time, you're very welcome. It is lovely to see you. I hope you enjoy what you see and what you hear and that you'll join us again. If you haven't um, subscribed, please click the like and subscribe and all that jazz. And if you're a returning viewer, it is lovely to have you back and have your company again today. I hope you all have a cuppa. I have mine in my beautiful Remembrances Pottery mug my sweater mug that I've had now for a few years and I'm ready to talk some knitting. I actually have felt in the last month um, that I haven't had an awful lot of knitting to show. I've been working on the same projects and I think that is what has kept me back from recording over the last few weeks. I felt as though I had nothing to show you. But today a project came off the needles and it is literally just off the needles. It is not blocked. The ends are all hanging. But I thought I would show you it as it is now. Emma from Willy Mammoth Fibres, um, Fibre Co has produced a, a beautiful pattern called Fernie Corner Shaw. And a link up above, I was visiting Emma a few weeks ago and she recorded a little bit about our meetup and the shawl and I'll link that up above but Emma a few about a month or so ago had put out a or asked a group of us um, to test knit her new shawl and I'm very slow at shawl knitting and everybody else seems to have produced one or two already for the test knit I'm happy to have produced one <laughs> and in the time limit I think the limit for the test knit is Friday possibly coming the 10th I think and she's hoping to get the pattern out very very soon after that but I was happy to do this and I finished it as I said today and this is the Fernie Corner Shawl Isn't it beautiful? Now it's not in its full glory because lace I think doesn't look particularly well until it's blocked and then it will really really show off all that beautiful lace work. So when I do get it blocked I'll show you on the next um, episode but I just wanted to show you it as it was now and already I love this shawl. It's crescent shaped it's almost triangular I suppose but I think it's more crescent shaped and will be more crescent shaped when it's um blocked um it's kind of slight triangular shawl I suppose um and it's knit in four ply fingering weight yarn the yarns that I have used the green, the dark green, was this. It was the Exmoor Sock by John Arbin and the colour was Hemel. That's quite a good representation of the colour. And this sock yarn was 60% Exmoor Blueface Superwash and 20% Corridale Superwash. 10% Swartbills and 10% Nylon. And it's really, really beautiful yarn and it is knit up so nicely. And I paired it with um, some of Emma's own yarn that she had dyed a few years ago that I had in stash. And it was this. And it was from her natural sock range and the colour was Flump. And it was because of the green that I bought the Exmoor. I quite like the pop of green that was through the this I had this in stash and bought the Exmoor. I haven't actually weighed the shawl. It used very little yarn. It used I think one 
one and a half skeins of this but I shall I'll, I'll double check that and um, so I think it used about 75 grams it didn't use a full 100 grams for the main color and it certainly didn't use very much of the the contrast color um, but I can weigh that out and let you know about that the next time but it's just a beautiful garter stitch shawl the gar I think this is actually a really good shawl um, if you're new to lace knitting um, you have a bit of experience of shawl knitting but you're new to lace knitting and want to incorporate it in because the lace is not difficult it's it's very intuitive once you get going and there's a couple of tips and tricks that help with lace um, as you're working it but the main body of the shawl is garter stitch so it's just backwards and forwards and then you work a lace bit and another little bit of the main colour and you finish with um, a couple of rows of the contrast and then a picot bind off and I think in the pattern there will be a link to a tutorial if you've never done a picot bind off before but it's really really easy um, you'll have no bother with that if you are deciding to knit this shawl and I think you should my advice when you get to the end of the garter stitch before you start the contrast is to thread a lifeline in and now if you're a lace knitter you'll know what I'm talking about if you're not a lace knitter um, a lifeline is just there in case you make a mistake and have to rip back and it can be quite difficult to rip back on lace if you don't know what you're doing I'm not confident in ripping back lace um, I end up ripping far more than I intend to so lifelines are put in so that you don't go back to have to go back too far and you can pick up the stitches where the lifeline is and start up again so when I got to the end of the garter stitch I threaded a piece of yarn the whole way through it's just threaded through the stitches and then just started to knit um, the lace what you can do at the end of every repeat of the lace um, and this had three repeats I think you can put in uh, a lifeline to each of those so um, as well so that when you finished a, a repeat put a lifeline in and then you can start the next one and if you happen to make a mistake in it you're only going back one repeat you're not having to go back to the start of the lace so you can do that and also put stitch markers in each in the pattern you get a, a, a part of the, the lace that you have to repeat across the row put stitch markers in between each repeat and it means that you can keep an eye on your stitch count very very easily but it is a very intuitive lace pattern it is not complicated and as I said once once this is blocked out the lace will be really pretty I'll try and insert a photograph here of Emma's shawl that she has already knit um, she is it's up on Instagram if you follow Emma on Instagram and you'll see it her uh, main color is a light color and her contrast is a darker autumnal color but I went the opposite and I'm just really pleased with it it is a really really lovely pattern and it should be out quite soon um, so hopefully you'll enjoy it when it comes out it will be well worth it as I said it was fingering weight yarn and it was knit on a I think it was a 4.5 millimeter or a 4 millimeter um, needle um, and a 5 the needle here it's a got 4.5 it's so difficult to read the numbers on these it's a US 7 I think that's a 4.5 and then the 5 millimeter needle uh, was used on the, the bind off so just a really nice, it, t it took me, I would say about two or three weeks to knit this because I was just picking it up when I was watching the television. Um, back 
the front. Uh, but it was just a really, really nice knit. So that is the only thing I've finished. And as I said, it needs blocked and all the ends woven in. But I have half a finished object. And this is part of my Lucky Dip Cal. It has been really lovely to see all the entries to the Lucky Dip Cal and everybody taking part on Instagram and over in the Ravelry group. There is a thread in the Ravelry group and it's just a chatter and finished objects thread for the Lucky Dip Cal. They're, um, I decided just to keep, keep it simple. But there's a hashtag on Instagram as well um, and the hashtag will be along the screen here. And it's just really exciting to see all the projects people are putting up. There's socks, there's hats, lots of different things. And you can join the Lucky Dip Cal at any part of the year. It doesn't matter. Um, what we did at the beginning of January was we picked 12 skeins of yarn from our stash. Um, 100 gram skeins, just single skeins that are languishing. Put them into separate bags. Some people have used wine bags. Um, I use brown paper bags. Throw them in a plastic bag. Put them in project bags. And every month pull one of them out so you don't really know what you're getting. My daughter packed 12 skeins for me and I don't know what I'm getting each month. So join in at any time. This is a very loosey-goosey cal. There are no real fixed rules. Um, just a single skein of yarn. Doesn't matter what weight. It can be bulky. It can be fingering weight. Double knit. Doesn't matter. And my January yarn was um, a sock yarn. It was a sock set from Shirley Bryan Yarn. She's an Ottawa dyer. And this was from her Deconstructed Fade. And Deconstructed Fades come like this. 250 gram skeins. And they do what they say. They fade in colour. This one is St Elmo's Fire, the one that I got in January or that I'm using in January. And I am knitting socks. I want to use all of this yarn. I don't want there to be very much of any left of this yarn because the colours are so beautiful. And what I did was I balled it up or caked it up opposites so this is the outer color in this skein and the color that you can see in the center was the outer color in this skein that I've already knit and it was just to have a bit of fun with the colors so I finished one sock and for the first time ever I have knit a knee sock because I want this, all of this yarn in my socks. I don't want any left out. These will be socks to wear over leggings in the house. Just, um, I had actually thought of putting the slipper feet that you can get, sewing those onto the bottom and making them slipper socks. Um, they might work over boots, um, scrunched into boots. But I wanted to use all of it. So I did toe up again which as you know is a rare thing for me i did a pair of two up socks at christmas um but it's not often i do two up i usually work cuff down but i used judy's magic cast on which i will link uh in the description box worked my toe and worked up to the end of the foot where i was going to start working the heel and this time i put in heel increases and work the heel at the same time before when I've done toe up socks it's always an afterthought style heel but this was actually I linked the sock pattern because it's a paid for pattern it was a hay brown berry sock pattern that I had and I just used the instructions for the heel from it and then I knit up the leg and I just kept knitting and then I did it two by two rib 
and I did the stretchy bind off that I normally do. Um, I don't know if there's a name for it. I'm sure there is, but it was just a stretchy-ish bind off because my bind off, if I do a, a knit, I don't know what it would be. If I, I need to do a stretchy bind off because my bind off would be quite tight if I didn't. I, I don't do the knit two and lift one over, um, which is what I was taught to do um, because it's just too tight. So I did these and it was funny because I always worried about it flaring at the top and I had been watching the crazy sock lady one day and she had talked about people saying why did the top of her sock not flare and it, she said it's because people try to compensate and let knit do their cast off or bind off um, they try and knit it looser but then it becomes really loose she said just do it at your normal tension um, if you do a stretchy bind off at your normal tension it'll be fine and it really has been but it's not just like the colours so I've marked out I've um, stitch markers in so that I can work the same amount of rows in the second sock and I have the second sock started I'm in the right bag so I'm almost at the point where I can start putting in the heel I have small feet so it will be the opposite and I love this I have 60 Eight stitches. I've started to work um, on 68 stitches. I used to knit my socks 64 stitches but um, I need to do bigger socks. Uh, still 2.5 millimeter needles which is a US one and a half 2.5 millimeter I think and I'm really really pleased now with the second one and I can't wait to work it up and I will finish it with the blue and I will have opposites in my socks so that's what I'm working on for the lucky dip so I'm, I'm behind in my lucky dip because I ended up knitting a knee sock but I have chosen picked out my bag for February uh, Amy labelled each month for me you don't have to do this Amy labelled each month for me um, with a month on it so I have no thought <laughs> and I have it chosen everything is very precarious here and the yarn's already living in a little bunny bag due to the post uh, in Royal Mail this has only arrived but this was actually a Christmas present from my family it's a bunny leather bunny bag from by the lakeside I have a tan one and I love these and this, that colour is just so me so it's ready and waiting in the bag and this was the yarn that came out for February that Amy chose and it's Legacy Fibre Arts Steel Toes which is 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon and fingering weight and the colour is Mulling Spices And I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this. Um, I'm possibly thinking of uh, crocheting with this because I'm behind, again, Lucy Goosey, I'm behind with January's um, project. I thought maybe crochet because it'll be a bit quicker and I have been looking at patterns for small shawls, scarves, um, I could knit socks but I'd be playing catch up I don't know it doesn't matter I might just play catch up and knit socks but I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do but this is the yarn for February and well done to everybody who's pr probably finished their February lucky dip um, I'll catch you up at some point so this is the February lucky dip and on the theme of not being uh, 
organized. I also haven't January's making year of making mal project finished. I'm very, very, very poor podcaster. I the year of making mal is the make along, so it can be anything that you make. And I'm using Making Magazine, which was originally the idea. It was a year of Making Magazine for me um, because I have all the issues of this and I think I'd only made one thing out of it, if anything. And I want to make something out of most, kind of have gone through most of the magazines by the end of the year. Now, not everybody is Making Magazine, so the year of Making Mal now encompasses any magazines sets of magazines you've got that you don't use any of those books or magazines that you have on your shelf that are so pretty and you're so excited to get them and you flick through them and you go oh I want to make that I want to make that I want to make that and you never get around to it because something else new and shiny comes along so for January I had planned a sewing project and I was going to make these little sachets just using fabric that I had I had got fabric from Julia Maskey dyed with plants it's just a card I picked up her fabric at the Fennel and Falls yarn festival in Ontario last June and it's all naturally dyed fabric and I thought this would make lovely little sachets that I could even, I can keep for myself. I'll fill them with lavender um, or I can use them as gifts. So that was the intention and it's still not a huge project, but just for some reason, January was a sludgy brain month. I was working on the shawl and not a lot of other things were getting done. But I do have the fabric all cut, so it's ready to go. But I do, I think what I want to do with some of them, if not all of them, is do a little bit of embroidery. For example, doing something with the leaf, even just working up the spine and the veins of the leaf. It might be nice to make that pop. So that is my little project. I'm going to get that finished in February because I really do want to do this and I just feel as though... My, my brain was focused on if I had to get anything done, I had to get the test not done. It felt like a priority. Now it's going to be a wee bit more relaxed and working on. It's not that I didn't enjoy that, but you know what I mean? The, the things that have no pre pressure. Sorry, Emma. It wasn't a pressure knit at all. You know what I mean? So I have this ready to go. But... It is February, so there had to be a February entry for the Making Mal. And this is what is lovely about the Making Mal, I think, is that it can be anything that's in these magazines. And the Making Magazine in particular is great because there's knitting, there's crochet, there's sewing, there's embroidery, there's toy making, um... There's colouring in pages and it's all creative. It's all about creativity and making things and just producing something. It can be a picture that you've coloured in. And it's that sense of feeling you've done something and a sense of peace because our making is very often just there to to help us through different things and it certainly has helped me through lots of things and in this month it has helped me through quite a lot of things too but I digress I needed to do something out of another one so I picked this one and actually I think of all the editions they put out this one is my favorite and it was the third one and it was dots and I think I want to make everything out of this there's very little in it that I wouldn't want to make um, the knitting projects are stunning there's socks there's um, a cardigan there's a shawl um, 
there's gloves. There are so many things in this particular edition. I'm trying to think. Yeah. And there are, there's actually, I, I don't knit toys, but that is beautiful. It's a Susan B. Anderson pattern for a giraffe. Um, the theme of this magazine is dots. Um, and that is just so cute. But because I'm trying to get caught up with the sewing and the socks and everything else, I looked through the magazine and I will do more out of this one. But I decided I was going to bake. And although I haven't January's project finished, I have February's project finished. I made this because there's dots. It's the blueberry afternoon cake. And I'll insert a wee bit of um, some pictures here. Um, I made it this week. It took an afternoon. I felt, I actually felt really good because I haven't baked properly in ages. And I used to bake a lot. And now I don't. I, I rarely bake things. I'll do things around Christmas time, maybe. Um, but it was just really nice to create something. And I mean, it got snaffled. I think there's one slice left. It got snaffled right away. It was really, really nice. So it was this blueberry um, afternoon cake. And that is the joy of the making mal. Um, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be knitting. It doesn't have to be crochet. It doesn't have to be sewing. It's making anything that is in one of your magazines. So there is a hashtag again for this. It's on the on Instagram and also on Ravelry there is a thread in the group <laughs> words uh, there's a thread in the group for you to put in any of your project for this again as a chat finished objects thread so I'm ahead of myself for February but I still haven't finished January so I'll, I'll get January finished this month as well and I hope you're enjoying uh, taking part in that Ma. Um, I have a few acquisitions because it was my birthday last week and I got birthday presents but I also got Christmas presents as I said the post was really really late <laughs> very delayed and I got some Christmas presents in the last couple of weeks that um, I want to show you because I am very excited about these um, I showed you there, you kind of got a glimpse of this deconstructed fade set and I, no surprise, love Narnia. If you've been here before, it's no surprise. I love C.S. Lewis's Chronicles of Narnia and Shirley Bryan has done a range of Narnia yarns and this was one I had, Aslan, and before Christmas, I had ordered these and got them sent over and they arrived a few weeks ago. So I have now got Dawn Treader into the wardrobe and around the lamppost and Care Paravel. So I have all of these and I have another one on the way, the last one on the set. Um, can't even remember the name of it but it's the last of the Narnia ones and I wasn't sure what to do with these because I want to use them all I can't I mean if I'm going to knit these into socks I'll be here forever and I thought of like one project and what one project could I use but they're, they're quite different from each other and I toyed with different ideas, but I have settled on what I'm going to do and I'm hoping to get this started in the next week or so. A few years ago, um, I knit the Habitation Throw um, as an advent knit um, by Curious Handmade. And I decided I, I like it, but it's quite small. If I use these, it will make a much bigger one and I'm going to hold it double with this Drops Kid Silk Mohair. 
and I'll hold it double and it'll make it fluffier and warmer. And I'm going to do almost what I did with my sock. I'm going to wind them up opposite to each other and I'll do it one direction with each of the skein and then uh, so fading from dark to light and then light back out to dark for the second half and make a habitation throw. So that is, that is the plan. Um, if you can think of any other projects that I could have a look at, drop it in the, the comments below because it's not hard and fast yet, but I want to use just these in the one project and I think a blanket is probably or throw is the way to do that. So I'm really looking forward to using those. So that was one of my Christmas gifts that came late. The other one that came late and actually then just became my birthday present <laughs> from my family was a kit for the Easy V sweater by, I think it's Caitlin Hunter. Yeah. And it's a big slouchy sweater, which I like the look of. And Sondra Yarn were doing a kit for it. Now, these are not my colours. And I am going to make one adaptation i think i don't think i'll put the color work in here i was watching stress knits podcast today actually and she has just finished one of these and she left out the color work because she's the same height as me and she said she felt it cut her height and i think she would be right so i think i'm not going to put the color work in here but into the body but the kit that i got was this gorgeousness so the main colour is this, Shock Horror, green again. The colour is Wanderlust and this is a DK sweater. Um, I'm trying to see what the yarn is. BFL Masham. So this is the Sunday morning DK from Sondra Yarn Co. And this will be the main colour. And these, whoops, if I can lift them, are the three colours that are going to be the colour work. This is Offline. Copper Kettle. Love that colour. And Simple Pleasures. And that's a really good look at the color so these are the colors wouldn't that be beautiful so i'm really looking forward to knitting that so that was a birthday present um still not sure when i'm going to get to knit it there's so much to knit but i'm looking forward to that it might go on quite soon to the needles and i just want to show you one other yarn uh set that came in well, actually maybe two I also, this was just a, a purchase, a sneaky purchase. I bought this. Um, it's Legacy Fibre Arts DK mini skein set. And this is the January set. They're doing one for each month of the year to knit a big blanket or throw or whatever. And I have decided that I'm going to try and get this every month, but I'm keeping it until Christmas. And this is, will be... I'll start it at the start of Advent and maybe knit either the Cozy Comfort Throw by Molly Clatt of a Homespun House or um, I don't know the name actually of the pattern. It's a Bakery Bears pattern and it's kind of strips. Blanket. I'll find out the name and I'll put it here because I don't know the name of it. Um, so it'll be either of those two. Um, but I'm going to keep them and I can look at them all year until I have my set. And I mean, that is, will be a project that will go into next year. It certainly won't all be finished at Advent. But that's the plan. And the other yarn uh, that came into my life was a gift. It was a Christmas gift from Selma, who has little big knits. And she got me a sweater's quantity of Green Mountain Spinnery. And I have used their yarn before, love their yarn. I have been to their booth in Rhinebeck and 
I was very excited to see this and it's that beautiful shade of blue um deep sleep is the name of the colorway and this yarn is this yarn is kid mohair and fine wool so it will knit up beautifully i have no idea what i'm going to do with it um it's 40 percent mohair and 60 percent wool but it will make a really nice light sweater so I'm very excited about that. So that's the yarny goodness that has come in to my life in the last few weeks. As I say, belated Christmas presents and Christmas becoming birthday presents. But I have a gift for you. Um, in the last episode, I kind of teased it by saying that there would be a giveaway this episode. We hit 10,000 subscribers over um vlogmas which just i have no words to express how thankful i am for this community and thankful you've subscribed to my channel and are happy to come back here um when i um record and i just wanted to say thank you for that it is also the sixth year i started in on the sign 2017 um recording this podcast so that is yes yeah, six years um anniversary of the podcast this past week um and we had 50 episodes it only took me six years everybody else who's been podcasting six years has like 200 up i have 50 i'm happy <laughs> um and i just wanted to celebrate all of those things and so I have a little giveaway, I have a little treat. Um, there will be three winners because I have three beautiful prizes for this. As you know, I love Sandy's bags. I showed you the bunny bag. I have this one that I've been using. I have a handbag and whatever. And Sandy very kindly has donated this, hopefully I'll get the picture up here, um, bag. And she will send that directly to the winner. So we have the bag from Sandy. It is absolutely beautiful and we have two yarn um prizes i have this beautiful skein of woolly mammoth emma donated this this is her natural sock base like the, the base that i've used in my shawl and the color is forest tapestry and there are just really beautiful shades in there this is 50 percent bfl 50 percent Cheviot wool and it's UK yarn, UK based uh, yarn and dyed here in Northern Ireland by Emma. So she's donated this skein and she has donated this bundle, um, which is the same colour as this one, but in a mini skein set. So it's Forest Tapestry and it's 100 grams. And 50% BFL, 50% Cheviot. And it's fingering both our fingering weight. So we have three prizes. Um, the bag and two skeins of yarn. And to be in with a chance to win that, all I want you to do is leave a comment below. Just say hello. Um, you can tell me maybe one of the things that you really want to knit this year. That's on your dream knit for this year or if you don't or a crochet or whatever make dream make this year or just say hello and uh, let me know that you're there and who you are and I will draw uh, at the next um, episode for the winners because we will have three lucky winners of these beautiful things and again just it's a thank you from the bottom of my heart for this community and for being here i love you all and i love spending time with you when i sit down to record thank you for all your comments for all the messages that you send through instagram and through the podcast um they're all read hopefully i um have hearted them all if i haven't commented i do read them all um and i really really appreciate them so thank you for that. 
that's all I have for today. Um, I have a little bit of footage that I'm going to add on to the end. Some people had asked because I had mentioned the journaling that I do. I'm not a great journaler. I am not a fancy journaler. <laughs> That's quite a hard word to say. Um, but I did take a little bit of footage almost, you know, at the beginning of January on how I was um, putting some things together in part of my journal anyway. And hopefully you'll enjoy that. Um, you can skip it or you can watch it, whichever. Um, but I'll put that on to the end. But until we see each other again, I hope you enjoy your knitting and your crafting and your making and say, drop the things that you're making into um, Ravelry and Instagram and I will see you the next time. <laughs>